can you, can you write down like, you know, it's just with sex. They all heard the response, but there was no answer to my question. My question still stands. Allah is praying upon Muhammad and that must be the hero of the prayer. It has nothing to do with I know Arabic or not. Because Islamic law about him, someone called Muhammad Hijab on the platform comfort, Allah is praying. Four, four. I, I'm not four or two. I don't care that much about that part. Allah My Allah. question is, who is the hero of the prayer? <laughs> it just comes with Allah is sending Rahman, mercy. Excuse me, your Allah failed to communicate. Allah doesn't say Rahman, does he? Maybe, maybe. Let me congratulate you. Oh, sure. Congratulations for stepping up and being the candidate to be Allah. Because you are telling me, creator of all things Allah, failed to communicate what he wanted to communicate. If the words are changing, when it comes to the Allah, can you please provide a chronic reference for me? Allah says, for everyone else, it is, for everyone else, it is pray, but when it comes to me, when I use it, that is a blessing. That is a blessing. That will be shame, all knowing, all wise Allah cannot communicate. Can you also deal with the hadith reference? I put it, my question still stands. Who is the hero of the prayer? There must be someone who is the hero of the prayer. Now, that was, uh, that was perfect there. Yeah. You got your time? Yeah, but here's the thing. Did you did you want notice one thing? I want the Muslims to see it. Uh, Hijaz shaked his, uh, Hatun's hand. That's a violation of the Sunnah. As a Muslim, he's not supposed to shake the hand of a woman. I want everyone to catch that. Mm -hmm. No. Did you catch that, David? No need to get nitpicky, Sam. <laughs> no, but hey, he's trying to follow the Sunnah of Muhammad. This is serious stuff. All right, now, All now, right. now check this out. So, um, Hatun pointed out, hey. Muhammad Hijab confirmed that Allah prays because in our debate, I said Allah prays for Muhammad. And then Muhammad Hijab replied, it's not to Muhammad, it's for Muhammad, which was, again, exactly what I said. So when Hatun points this out, hey, don't try to tell me that it doesn't mean prayer. Muhammad Hijab himself confirmed that's what it means. And then Daniel just goes for, right? Because because that's what Muhammad Hijab said, right? So that's all Daniel says. And then Hatun replies, uh, it doesn't matter, two or four, right? Yeah. Because that's irrelevant to the issue of whether Allah is praying. Um, and then Ijaz notices, says, Allahu Akbar. He goes, yeah. Allahu Akbar. Right? Because he made a point. He thinks, yeah. yeah, he thinks this is, this, is some, <laughs> this is some huge issue. Oh, and then Hatun went on to say, guys, you need to give me a Quranic <laughs> reference, right? So she's saying, if Allah really meant that he's doing something else, if he really means I'm sending blessings or mercy or something else, then he is a poor communicator because he's using the wrong word, right? If, yeah. if you're saying you want, if I'm saying, hey, uh, I want to run, but by run, I mean eat, then I'm, I'm, I'm being a very, very poor communicator. So that's, that's what she points out that Muslims are doing. And then... She challenges him for a reference, which is, that seems like a very important point, right? If you're yeah. saying that Allah means something different by the word here, then I challenge you to give a reference from the Quran that says, yes, everywhere else the word means this. Yes, everywhere else you go, Salah means prayer. But right here in these verses, it magically changes meaning. Can you defend that? Because if Allah yeah. never says something like that, then he's just not clear. He's a, he's a horrible communicator. So, what do you think? Yeah, in fact, uh, again, we're just simply rehashing the arguments we made in the previous sessions because everything you just said, we refuted. Now, let me again quote something I quoted in our previous session, David. <clears throat> we cited Edward Henry Palmer's translation of the Quran. Mm -hmm. Let me read what, how he translates 3343 and the note that goes with his translation, which confirms what you're saying. Okay, now, 
He it is who prays for you and his angels too, to bring you forth out of the darkness into the light, for is merciful to the believers. Now notice again the word merciful is there, distinguished from pray. But notice why Allah prays for Muslims. Allah is praying for Muslims to bring them out of darkness into light. So that means, like you said in the previous show, that when Allah prays, He prays that His mercy triumphs His wrath, so He can constrain Himself. Now Allah is praying for Muslims to be guided. So basically saying to Himself, O Himself, please guide the Muslims out of darkness into light. But let's put that aside. We'll get into that maybe in future sessions. Here's the note. Wonderful note. The same word is used as is rendered pray in all the other passages in the Quran. Though the commentators interpret here as meaning bless, so too in the formula which is always used after Muhammad's name, Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, may God bless and preserve him, is literally, may God pray for him and salute him. Now what is Palmer saying? This verb, <clears throat> Salla, appears... All throughout the Quran and always with the meaning of pray. But then notice what he says. But Muslim commentators, for some reason, in this verse, Surah 3343 and 3356, choose to render it as bless. The question is, if this verb always means pray in every appearance in the Quran, why then all of a sudden, when that same verb is now applied to Allah along with angels, in 3343, and then 3356, it's applied to Allah, angels and believers. Somehow, it doesn't mean what it always means in every other instance. Now, like David said, if Allah wanted to say that he's blessing Muhammad, why didn't he just come out and say it? Allah blesses Muhammad. If, if Allah wanted to say that he sends mercy to Muhammad, why didn't he just come out and say, I sent... I mean, obviously, the word barakah is used all throughout the Quran, and rahmah is used. Why did he use those words in these passages if that's what he meant? I thought the Quran is the epic of Arabic literature, grammar, and eloquence. And yet here Allah is doing such a bad job telling us what he really meant, leaving it to Muslims to come up with all these con explanations to help Allah and his messenger out. And notice the kind of help they, that Allah needs, right? Allah, need, Allah needs needs multiple Muslim apologists to come along and just keep lying over and over again. That's the help Allah needs. He doesn't just need someone to come along and say, Oh, well, here's how we know that in this particular verse, it means something completely different from what it normally means. And here's our evidence for that. He needs his apologists to come along and just start making stuff up left and right. Yeah, launch personal attacks, speak in the most arrogant yeah. manner, arrogant and condescending manner imaginable so that the, the Muslims who are surrounding and watching will think, will think that a powerful answer has been given. And you just wonder, wow, you know, Allah couldn't say what he meant, but nor could he send any apologist to give any sort of reasonable defense of what he actually meant. So, uh, all right. So we, we have, uh, we have, uh, We've looked at their opening statements and we saw Hatun's response. Now let's see how Ijaz refutes what Hatun just said. So Hatun, let me congratulate you. She said at the start that it doesn't matter if it means four or two, it doesn't matter. Allah is the poor communicator. But if you don't know the difference between four and two, the poor communicator is you. No, she also said, it's because you're laughing, right? No, I want you to also pay attention to this. She says the Quran communicates poorly. But I, I gave her a reference. When they say that God died upon the cross, they said cannot refer to one nature but another. This is an analogy, a comparison really. So when you say it's perfectly fine, you don't have consistent standards, the language doesn't matter, you don't know what relational verbs are, or the function of language, then you read things out of context. So my demand upon you is to show something that relational verbs do not exist in the Arabic language, they cannot apply to the Quran, they cannot apply to the verse. Now if you understand Tawheed, you ask a ridiculous right. You ask a ridiculous question, you ask who prays, who hears the prayer? It's very simple. The Quran says Allah is all caring. He is the one conferring the blessing. He's not, what do you think he's saying words praying upon him? What do you think? Where does it say what kind of prayer he's given? Do you think he's reading the Lord's prayer to Jesus, the prophet? Come on. So my argument again to you is, use your brain, Hatun. 
if the language of the Quran does not matter, bring your evidence that it does not. No. Okay. 30 seconds left. Okay, I'll make it simple then. You said the word Allah and Allah don't matter. So if the words don't matter, how do you come to the conclusion that you do? Tell me this, when you study the Bible, don't you have to go back to the original language, the Koine, to make sense of it? If you do that for the Bible, why won't you do that for the Quran? Give me a reference from a Muslim lexicon for, that says it must mean literally praying to or worship of. Bring that for me. Quite simple. All right, Sam, are you ready to uh, drop this point and recite the Shahada? Yeah. Yeah, I'm ready to go to the local mosque and say, there is no God but Yahovah and Jesus Christ is the beloved Son of the Father. I'm ready. All right, so... Um, what, what did we... he say? Huh? He didn't say nothing. <laughs> yeah, that's, that's the point, right? It, you, could, you could be a Muslim apologist, speak for an hour straight, say absolutely nothing, but just sound like you're saying something profound, and that will sway yeah. the audience in your favor. They'll think, oh, this is the greatest apologist of all time. And, and by the way, that's why they're getting apologists like this, right? That's why they're, that's why they're getting people like Muhammad Hijab and, uh, I mean, you know, that, even back in the day, uh, Ahmed Dida and Zakir Naik. If you listen to what they're saying a lot of the time, it's just absolute, complete nonsense. But yeah. as long as they sound like they're, they're saying something powerful, they've, they've, they've got the, the audience in the, in the palm of their hands. So um, uh, just to recap what Hijab said, he says, well, Hatun says it doesn't matter if it's two or four, right? And then he goes off, and, and ha ha, well, that, yeah, that's because you don't know the languages. I, I don't know if he just doesn't understand the simple point. Her only point is, it doesn't matter. Two, four, upon, whatever. If it's Allah prays, then he's praying. If he's praying upon, then he's praying. If he's praying to, he's praying. If he's praying for, he's praying. No matter what happens here, he's praying. So you Muslims have an issue with your doctrine of Tawheed. Um, he says that he gave evidence for his position. Notice, she asked for a reference. If Allah means something different, why doesn't he say that? And his response is that he gave evidence. Well, dies in Christianity means something different when applied to God than it does yeah. when it applies to a man. Yeah. But we don't, we, don't say, we don't say God died. We, we say that Jesus died. And yes. then we explain what we mean. But when we say that Jesus died, we mean the same thing that we mean when we exactly. say that Bob died. Right. We mean the same yeah. thing. So we're not changing the meaning. So that completely falls apart. Um, and then he attacks her, says, oh, you don't understand relational verbs. Well, neither, <laughs> neither does he. He doesn't know what they exactly. are. Or if he does, he's just making things up, um, says she doesn't understand language. Um, uh, and after that, he goes on to say uh, that I think he said that Allah is the hearer. So she's asking who is the hearer. And he says, Allah is the all hearing. And so it sounds like Allah is the one hearing the prayers. Um, tells her to use her brain, and uh, then he then he said something like, uh, uh, "Do you think he's reciting the Lord's prayer?" Now, interestingly, Sam, we do know we do know some things that Allah is actually praying, right? Yes, I have it here. Yeah, but if you want me to read the hadith, we know that Allah prays, and He's been praying <clears throat> a thousand years before the creation of the heavens and the earth. So, you want me to read it, uh, David? Go ahead. Go ahead. Okay. Now, remember, you and I know this, but I want. <clears throat> the non-Muslims to know that when Muslims pray five times a day, they're basically reciting chapters of the Quran. And every one of their prayers has to begin with Surah Al-Fatiha, the first chapter. So notice, if you ask a Muslim, when you're praying five times a day, what are you doing? Are you just praying as the Spirit leads you just in your own? No, 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 no. We are reciting chapters of the Quran, right? <clears throat> okay, now, so the Muslim prayer, the five daily prayers, includes reciting chapters of the Quran. Now, folks, tell me, whether Allah prays like Muslims do. Because here's a hadith. This comes from Al-Tirmidhi. This comes from the Alim version. Because there's another version by Darus Salam. This is the Alim version. Translation of Tirmidhi number 660. Watch guys. Narrated Abu Huraira. Allah's messenger said. A thousand years before creating the heavens and the earth. Allah recited. Taha Yasin, chapter 20 and chapter 36 of the Quran. If you want to know what Taha Yasin is, chapters 20 and 36. Who's reciting these chapters before the creation of the heavens and the earth? Allah. And when the angels heard the recitation, they said, Happy are the people to whom this comes down. Happy are the minds which carry this, and happy are the tongues which utter this. Now notice, the angels already know that these chapters will be revealed to mankind, and that men will recite it with their tongues like Allah is doing. 
So here's my question. I have actually two questions. Number one, what in the world is Allah doing reciting chapters of the Quran a thousand years before the creation of heavens and the earth? <clears throat> Isn't that a type of worship in that if Muslims worship Allah by praying to him five times a, times a day and their prayers include reciting the chapters of the Quran, then what is Allah doing? If he's not worshiping, then tell me what is he doing by reciting chapters 20 and 36 of the Quran. And secondly, I asked you this last time, David, because I'm no scientist. But last time I checked, scientists tell me that time came into being with the Big Bang. In other words, prior to the universe, there was no time, right? Mm -hmm. Am I wrong? Nope, you're correct. But here it says, a thousand years before the creation of heavens and earth. How can you measure time before heavens and earth? There was no time. Does this mean that Allah has always existed in time? Maybe we can have Muslims answer those two questions. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. All right. So notice that uh, Muhammad, I mean, uh, Muhammad and Allah confirm that Allah prays. Hatun has shown that from the Quran, from the Hadith. Um, Ijaz replies by saying, Completely false things or things that have nothing to do with the topic and a variety of personal attacks. His final point there was, he said, don't we have to, don't we have to go back to the original Koine Greek? Don't we have to go back to the original language? That's what um, we've been doing. <laughs> well, yeah, 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 no, yeah. Now notice, one, um, no, to, under, to understand the Bible, to understand the scripture, you, you don't. There might be specific yeah. instances where... Uh, you know, a, a passage may be confusing or there, there might be some dispute about the translation or something like that where, where it would be helpful. But when, that's not what's going on here. That's not what's going on here. We're the ones going back to the sources. We're the ones going back to your sources showing it can't mean Allah sends blessings. It can't mean that. That's not us saying that. That's your own Muslim scholars saying that. That's your own prophet declaring that. And so we're the ones who are going back to the sources and Muslims are the ones trying to ignore that and just say something that makes them feel good. And uh, all Ijaz can do is just misrepresent and distort and launch personal attacks.